My name is Richard Payne. I'm an architect, and I'm the architect behind the House Simple concept. When I first started thinking about prefabrication, I looked at prefabricated houses, and it seemed to me that they were trying to replicate traditional forms, forms that had come about by stacking bits of clay one on top of another over a thousand years. And the production process was forced to produce a form that had been produced by another technique. So I considered the production process and what would be required to simplify and economize the overall scheme. And to me, it seemed that I wanted to maximize repetition, minimize cutting of materials. And so I thought, what sort of form would that produce? And it produced this little form here, where every elevation is the same and the roof is symmetrical. And it also produced a form in which there was a diagonal in every face. There's a diagonal on every elevation, and the plan has a diagonal in it, which makes it a very rigid structural form. The plan is designed to fit in with standard modular components, such as plasterboard and plywood. And as you can see, the plan is a square. It's a very simple plan. The stair follows the diagonal, which gives us two equal sized living spaces and a kitchen. And then if we go upstairs, the stair lands at a small landing, a bathroom, which is over the kitchen, and two equal sized bedrooms. This means it's a very efficient plan. One circulates around the stair. There are no extraneous corridors. The only pure circulation spaces are the space at the bottom of the stair and the space at the top, top of the stair. On the ground floor, there need be no walls at all other than some posts to hold the floor up. And upstairs is more cellular with the two bedrooms and the bathroom. Because the roof is a stressed skin construction, the ceiling is able to follow the roof. This produces dynamic spaces upstairs with the ceiling rising to almost five meters. And because there's a ridge beam, there's no spreading on the roof against the walls. Therefore, in fact, you don't need these walls to hold the roof up. And so we can actually build the house completely inverted with the bedrooms on the ground floor and the living space on the top floor where you have this single huge vaulted space which would produce a very dynamic and tall living space. The other fairly unique feature about the plan is that every living space has two external walls, which means because of the two external walls, the house can either be configured on its own, it can be configured as a terrace with the windows looking forwards and backwards, or it can go around a corner and look left and right. It can even gather, be gathered into a group of four, like this, and it can work as a terrace, or it can go around a corner. The point about this form is that because the pitch of the elevation is one in two, and the ridges along the diagonal, that produces a true gradient at right angles to the ridge of one over root two, which is about 35 degrees, which can take just about any roof covering, be it plain clay tiles, slate, concrete tiles, or Wrigley tin. And of course, when it is a group of four, the bathrooms can have roof lights to get light into the depth of the plan there. And of course, the water is collected at the low points with a gutter that's more of a directional gutter because the rain water is coming off at right angles to the ridge, not at right angles to the wall. So it has to catch it, drop it, gather it into a hopper, and take it down. This early study model shows how the dynamics of the internal spaces work, how if you remove the walls on the ground floor, you can circulate around the stair, and then the tall spaces that you get in the bedrooms upstairs. I've always loved numbers and algebra and geometry, and this building contains a number of interesting um, phenomena. The elevation rises at a, at a pitch of one in two, which, of course, is the diagonal of a double square with dimensions two by one. The length of that diagonal is root five. If we then take a one by one square and then complete the rectangles along the length of that diagonal, each one of those rectangles is 0.618 wide and one tall. 
a golden section rectangle. And that square with that rectangle forms another golden section rectangle where this is 0.618 and this is 1. So the relationship of 1 to 0.618 is 0.618 and the relation of 0.618 to 1 is 1 to 1.618. So the pitch of the elevation is 1 in 2, which creates a diagonal length root 5, which creates a golden section rectangle overlap with another golden section rectangle. And if you then consider the diagonal of the ridge and the height that the roof rises from the eaves, that's in the relationship of 1 to root 2. Root 2 and root 5 are often involved in natural relationships within nature, such as the spiral of a nautilus shell and the Fibonacci series, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and so on, where each number is the sum of the two numbers before, and the relationship of each number to the one in front is 1 to 1 1.618, and every number behind is 0.618 of the number in front. This is the golden section ratio. Up until now, we've been describing the principles of this house, showing the smallest variant. But because of the requirements for lifetime homes and the requirements for a downstairs lavatory, we've expanded the system to produce a slightly larger house. It still follows the basic principles of the original. The stair follows the diagonal. The living spaces are equally spaced. The kitchen is at the bottom, below the bathroom but there is now an additional lavatory and possible shower on the ground floor. And the stair is now slightly off center to allow one to return back to a third bedroom on the first floor. So in considering the market for these houses, we've been looking at the requirements of the Homes and Communities Agency, Lifetime Homes and Scheme Development Standards for housing associations, and therefore considering the furniture layouts, the movement patterns within the house, and reconsidering the volume and how to maximize the use of this space The section is still the same, but now we've introduced a new study deck off the bedroom, and one gains access to this from an alternate tread stair from one of the bedrooms, and a plant space over the bathroom. We're using the maximum volume of this house, going right up into the roof space, but retaining the dynamic tool spaces within the bedrooms. And so this house is uh, environmentally sustainable, it's very efficient in terms of its surface area to volume contained. It is designed to fit in with modular products such as plywood and plasterboard. And the 1.2 rise of the elevation means that for every panel that we cut this corner off, we can use that off cut in the adjacent panel. It's also very efficient in plan. Whether you have bedrooms upstairs or the plan is reversed, and you have a large living space upstairs. It minimizes circulation and maximizes the living space and it produces architecturally dynamic spaces all within an economical construction cost.